Hi, my name's Tom Lonsborough. I'm the Ableton Certified Trainer here at the MIDI School. And in this video, I'd like to introduce a very simple, uh, free to download, mix down reference tool that I've created for use in Ableton Live. So before we start talking about the inner workings of what is this, uh, essentially this audio effects rack, uh, let's just talk a little bit about what referencing actually is, if you are unfamiliar with the term. Um, basically, referencing would be comparing the work that you're doing in terms of you know music creation and mix down with professionally mixed, commercially available records, just to see how yours measure, measures up in terms of things like frequency content, um, the amount of compression that's been used, and the amount of reverb that's been used, you know, among other things. Uh, and that way, you know, if you use something which is done well commercially as a benchmark, and you, you know, you try and get your track to sound as close to that as you possibly can do uh, in terms of its sonic quality, then your track is going to stand a better chance of, uh, of of doing well. Okay, so uh, let's just drag and drop this onto the master track. In fact, you can see I've already got one here. Let's just get rid of that. So there are a range of commercially available um, reference tools, uh, but obviously the, the majority of those are going to cost you money. Um, no doubt there's probably a Max for Live device out there as well that will do a similar job. Um, but again, Max for Live only comes with the more expensive suite version of Ableton Live, or you have to purchase the software Max for Live separately from Ableton's website. Um, so this audio effects app will work in any version of Ableton Live where you've got access to the looper audio effect device. Right, so let's just have a quick listen to this track that I've been working on, um, pre-master, and decide on uh, what genre of music, what, what style it is, and then look for some tracks of a similar ilk to compare and contrast with this. <laughs> Okay, so it's got that, you know, really commercial house music feel to it. So I'm going to look for something of a similar style. So I've got a couple of a uh, couple of examples here. So I'm just going to drag and drop these in. All right, so we're going to prepare these files for use in a moment. Let me just explain a little bit uh, about this this uh, audio effects rack. So what we can do once it's all prepared is just hide away the the inner workings of the rack to leave us with the eight macro controls at the front end. Um, if we take a look at what's, what's, actually, what's actually happening inside, you can see the rack comprises of five different chains, although you can customise this to include more chains if you wish. The first chain, chain A, is the piece of music that we're working on. So I've actually uh, just exported uh, a finished mix down, but um, you could have this uh, loaded onto the master track of uh, a project that you're still working on. So you notice by tweaking macro control number one it will allow us to select chain A. Chain A is the track that we're working on. And then we can use that macro to move over to chain B. So let's have a look see what's on chain B. You can see that there's an Ableton Live uh, audio effect device, a looper device. So what we're going to do in a moment is just um, prepare some 16 bar loops to drop into well the first two chains. You can see we can switch between our track and up to four other pieces of music just to compare and contrast. Now between each of the chains there's a, uh, chains, there's a little crossfade which means you can very subtly and slowly blend across from your track to the next to the next. You know just to see how your track would mix in. So that's macro control number one. Macro control 2, 3, 4 and 5 are volume controls for uh, the comparison chains. So you see my tracks pre-master, it's at a lot lower level than these tracks that have been mastered. So basically, you want, once we drop these samples in, we can use these controls to attenuate the volume of the chain. Um, often our ear perceives louder to be better so you want to take out this variable by making sure that your 
comparison chains are of a, an equal perceived loudness to the music that you're mixing. And the final three macro controls that you can see there are actually assigned to um, an EQ3 that's on the first chain, i.e. our piece of music. And say, you know, there is frequency differences between our track and the reference tracks, we can perform, you know, broad brushstroke EQ tweaks, so bass, mids and highs just to see what we're going to have to do to our mix overall and then obviously what we'd do is we'd go back and address those individual elements so if I'm having to boost the gain of the lows on my track to get it to blend with the references you know in the right sort of way I'm going to need to go back and address say my kick drum my bass instrument maybe just give those a little boost in the in the bass part of the spectrum Right, so let's move on to preparing these files. Um, now you could technically just get hold of these files and plonk them straight into the looper. However, it works best if we just cut out a smaller 16 bar phrase to, to make use of. So I'm just going to solo, let's just warp. So I'm taking into account the fact that you would know how to warp a full piece of music here. Uh, if you're having trouble with that, then please don't hesitate to drop me a line and I can give you some pointers. track nicely synced up there I'm just going to use the shortcut command and L to loop around the 16 bar portion that I've just highlighted and then I'm just going to crop that right let's just drop that into the right chain make sure yeah B1 let's just drop that into the the looper device just takes a moment to process that And there we go. So obviously you can see that dropping a full track into it would uh, take rather a long time for it to analyse. That's why I've confined it to 16 bars. All right, let's just get the next one and load it into chain B2. Again, I've just selected a 16 bar portion with the left mouse button dragging um, command L to, to loop I'll just crop that and let's just plonk that in here again just takes a, a moment to analyze that in the meantime we'll just turn the metronome off there we go we can get rid of that second track now. Okay. So you can see how the looper, when I started playing, is following. click track which is really handy so let's start the next one playing there we go right so I'm just gonna blend over to reference number one
And if you get your warping spot on, uh, what you'll find is that the sync between the original piece of music that you're trying to mix and the references is spot on, which makes it a lot easier to, to reference. Um, you know, some of the other commercially available uh, referencing plugins don't actually allow you to do that. So that's why I've uh, created this using the Looper uh, device, because it allows that syncing of projects. So it's really handy. Um, you'll see as well... Okay, so I've already attenuated the volumes, so we're looking at about minus 11. Let's just um, go minus 10, minus 10. Yeah, and they're a comparable loudness now. So what I've gleaned from that is that perhaps my kick drum is just a little bit boomy at the moment. It's not quite as tight as these other two examples. So I'm going to have to go back to my original mix and just address that. But that device can just sit there on the master track, ticking over in the background. You know, you can assign that, either hardwire that to a, a MIDI control in front of you, or, you know, if you've got push or similar, that will automatically be mapped out and just periodically just compare and contrast what you're doing with the commercially available work of others. So I hope you find this uh, device useful. Any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch. Tom at midischool.com.